Surprise, surprise, our eyes weren't lying. We have even more confirmation that Dragon Age The Veil Guard is a mediocre game. This coming from someone who was actually given the chance to play the game for seven hours at the behest of BioWare's parent company, Electronic Arts. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at The Trent Report. I wrote this up over at thatparkplace.com. I will have the link in the description below. You can also find a link to become a channel member, offer a variety of subscription options, and you can help support what we do or what I am doing here on this channel, fighting back against woke ideology when it comes to video games and entertainment. So uh, this comes to us from YouTuber Neon Knight. He claims to have played over seven hours of Dragon Age The Veil Guard, and he described the game as a thin coat of paint as well as a borderline soft reboot. I uh, did a post about a 17-minute video uh, to his YouTube channel, uh, but this is what he had to say. So with Dragon Age The Veil Guard, there have been a lot of attempts, in my opinion, to convince the general public that this game is something that it really isn't, to convince you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears what you've been seeing in trailers and previews and believe that the Dragon Age DNA in Veil Guard, specifically its gameplay, is anything more than a very thin coat of paint. Uh, time and time again, these people are like, you need to play it before you comment on it. You can't actually look at the trailers and make judgments off that. It's just utterly ridiculous. We can indeed look at something, see it for see its cover, and make a judgment on whether or not we want to purchase that. We can look at a trailer and say, ah, that's not for me, not interested in it, don't like what I'm seeing. There's nothing at wrong with that. You don't have to actually play the game in order to make that judgment call. Now, sure, there can be hidden gems, hidden behind terrible marketing and things such as that, but I think those are exceptions rather than the rule. And everything we've seen from Dragon Age The Veil Guard, there are so many red flags, just absolutely insane amounts of red flags from the gameplay, from the character design, from all of the uh, politics and ideology that they've talked about this game, from who's making the game, etc. The list goes on and on and on. And we, we, we've seen this, we've been talking about this, and it's very easy to say, no, not going to do that because of all of these red flags. Yet, you'll still see people, especially in the media trying to tell us like, no, 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 it's great. And the reason why they're really doing that is because they're, it pushes the right politics that they want to push. Anyways, Neon Knight continues saying, and as someone who played the game for about seven hours a few weeks ago, well, I guess my thesis statement here is that it isn't. A thin coat of paint is more or less exactly what Veilguard has to offer longtime fans. And serious level-headed discussion about this game is completely hampered by what seems to be an almost universal refusal to just say that out loud. No problem saying that out loud here. Have been doing it for, <laughs> for months now, for months. From there, he shared that the game will be compared to God of War 2018. He said the game's combat and exploration is full-blown or at least 85% God of War 2018 worship. This new Dragon Age is all about the action, building up a rage meter to release an ultimate, getting your perfect parries in, shield throws, talismans that activate special abilities, plenty of pots to break and chests to open. You get it. Point is, somebody really liked God of War 2018 and said, why don't we just do that and be done with it? So he actually does talk about the, the combat later on in his video, where he says that it exceeded his expectations. However, he had already lowered his expectations, knowing that it was going to be this very action-oriented uh, combat system. But And that's obviously not what he wants from a Dragon Age game, but he said that for what it is, he, it exceeded his expectations. Uh, he then noted the game will also be compared to the Guardians of the Galaxy game uh, regarding its tone. He said, this is the point of the video where some of you recoil in horror and maybe projectile vomit, but it's also the point where at least some of you are probably thinking, hey, those are two not bad at all games. You could do much worse in terms of comparison. And yeah, if you're thinking that, I completely agree. However, he does say this. These two games are not what Dragon Age fans are expecting a Dragon Age game to be compared to. He says, there's no denying that the Dragon Age fan base of just six months ago before the trailer release would have torn, torn that imaginary person apart for merely suggesting such a thing. Yet ultimately, that's the type of game Bioware have made here. So if you were actually trying to compare these two games six months ago, people are like, what are you even talking about? That doesn't sound like Dragon Age at all, but that is what they have created with the Veil Garb is basically what he is saying there. Uh, and uh, the tone here with the quippy Guardians of the Galaxy, I didn't play that. 
Uh, I've obviously seen the movies, seen what they've done there. They, I, I watched some of the trailers and things like that. It did look like it had kind of that movie tone to it. Uh, and that just doesn't really fit into uh, Dragon Age. The, the quips and everything like that, especially if it's like constant, uh, no. Uh, and that's been a big problem with entertainment in general. They're always trying to do these quips now. And uh, lots of times it just doesn't fit with the uh, the movie or the characters that they're trying to tell stories around or even the stories that they're trying to tell. Uh, it specifically fits like Guardians of the Galaxy. And they've tried to ape that uh, throughout almost everything we, in entertainment. And it's just, it's, been an abysmal failure uh, on that front. Uh, he then went on to claim that Bioware, quote, tried to make a very palatable game here that could appeal to everyone instead of directly targeting their own fan base and hopefully breaking out from there. The ideal approach, in my opinion, obviously targeting your own fan base. And this is what, this is what we see. Uh, they don't actually try to target the fan base of the game. I'm not sure if he's saying that they're trying to be general here. I think that, that this game is hyper-targeted towards a certain uh, segment of the population. He doesn't really comment on any of that throughout his video uh, at all. Doesn't make any mention of any of that stuff, uh, interestingly enough. But uh, I, I, I think that we see this all the time, right? And, and this is why uh, I think Isaac Young's comments, which I brought out previously about how he describes this as kind of a humiliation ritual where they take your toy, in this case, Dragon Age, and they just poop on it. And so then they, they want you to still play with the pooped on toy as like, look, look, <laughs> I took your toy, I pooped on it, and now you still have to play with it and look at you playing with a pooped on toy. And that is the humiliation ritual is that they are forcing you or thinking that they're forcing you to play with a pooped on toy. Fortunately, we've seen that we're not doing that. We're like, you can keep that pooped on toy. We don't need that. And we're going to laugh at you for pooping on the toy. And you're the one who now has to deal with the pooped on toy. Um, but that's what, they're, that's what they are trying to do right here. And he's kind of saying this, right? Uh, in, in, in different words, different manner. But uh, he's saying that they clearly are not making a game for the actual fans. They've taken the game and changed it into something else, something like God of War, something like Guardians of the Galaxy. He says here, Bailguard as a quippy action adventure is trying pretty hard at times and has its moments. It's just not that a quip-filled action game is, uh, is what most Dragon Age fans were asking for. Exactly. Who was asking for a quip-filled action game uh, called Dragon Age? Absolutely not. That's not what people were asking for. Uh, he then shared that he was, quote, incredibly disappointed when he found out that Veilguard allows you to import a grand total of, wait for it, zero choices from Origins, zero choices from Dragon Age 2, and just three from Inquisition, a game that Veilguard is a direct sequel to. So this is something that we already knew. They talked about this. They said that there, those um, choices would not affect the game. We had the creative director explaining that decision. We also had the play tester revealing this as well. So this isn't anything really new. He's just kind of confirming this for us. He did share that the choices that do carry over are who you romanced in Inquisition. And then uh, the other two choices are from the DLC. So if you didn't play the DLC, you, <laughs> you got to like make up the decisions here. Uh, and those are whether you chose to disband the Inquisition or and whether you chose to uh, stop Solus or Val to stop Solus. So those are the only three choices that actually matter in this game. And he says, Bioware doing this very strange thing with Veilguard. Vail on one hand, it's a direct sequel with a bunch of returning characters in prominent roles. Yet on the other, it's a borderline soft reboot trying to minimize every direct tie to the past in an attempt to avoid scaring off non-Dragon Age fans. I think that might be his rationalization or justification for it. Again, going back to that poop on the toy, toy metaphor, I think probably has more validity given what we've been seeing in uh, not only in the video game industry over the past couple of years, but also obviously in Hollywood uh, when it comes to movies and TV as well. Uh, let the past die. Kill it if you have to. The slogan from uh, The Last Jedi spoken by Kylo Ren. That is pretty much what these people believe. Uh, let the past die. Kill it if you have to. And they do it by pooping on the toy, right? Uh, he says these decisions take what made Dragon Age stand out and reduce it to a shell of it self yeah yeah not not hard to see that not hard to see that uh he said that uh he just uh he later in the video he described Veilguard as a very linear game or at least it feels that way 99 percent of the time he says that sure you can choose the options that you want uh from the lighthouse base of operations you can decide what mission you want to do i don't believe things are all forced in a specific order but ultimately once you're doing a mission which is what you're going to be doing most of the time you're being funneled down a set path with little offshoots here and there to find some gear or an optional enemy 
maybe. And so uh, that's pretty much what he had to say there. Obviously, he spends, like I said, the rest of the video talk, kind of talking about uh, the game as it is uh, outside of comparing it to uh, the other games in the Dragon Age franchise and um, things like that. So I don't have any problems with linear games, uh, but I think the expectation for Dragon Age is that uh, you weren't going to really be uh, as as linear anymore following Inquisition. You would be able to kind of go and do the things that you wanted to do. You had a bunch of quests that you could take on. You could pick and choose what you wanted to do. Uh, this sounds a lot more like uh, Final Fantasy 13 to me, where it was extraordinary linear and it wasn't really compelling in a linear fashion. Like I said, you can do linear really well uh, in a compelling fashion, but the way he's describing it doesn't sound like it is that compelling. It does sound kind of like a little bit of a slog uh, when you actually go on to take on these missions. There aren't, uh, there aren't really places where you can really kind of explore uh, the level designs and things like that. It is kind of follow the path. And maybe there's like a, a little bit of branching, as he says, to find uh, an optional enemy or maybe some gear or something like that in a chest. But it sounds like for the most part, you're, you're following kind of a singular path rather than being able to even get the sense that you could potentially be exploring the area. So that is what Neon Knight had to say regarding Dragon Age the Veil Guard. None of this really surprising or shocking. As he mentioned in the very beginning of the video, we've all kind of seen this with our eyes uh, and heard with our ears uh, what this game was going to be like. And uh, it basically is just confirming what we all thought uh, to begin with, even after that first kind of trailer when they had changed the name of the game from uh, the Dreadwolf to Veilgar. And uh, just, just, just more confirmation that uh, when we suspect uh, or when we see all these red flags, they end up coming true. It is, it is. Those red flags are there for a reason, and <laughs> they're telling us, they're warning us. So we need to follow uh, our intuition there, our instincts on this. Uh, but let me know what you guys make of what Neon Knight had to say here. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, but to always speak the truth.